All right. Good morning. Oh, let's go back and set this up right. There we go. Physics 11. And we're going to be going over the chapter 5 forces review. And this is dealing with friction and uh, springs. Now it's kind of funny because I had printed out or you know was posting these uh, these worksheets and uh, looked at the answer key and the answer key wasn't right <laughs> and it was just different versions between the answer key and so on. Anyways. That's really kind of stupid to say. <laughs> Let's deal with question number one. Deal with question number one shows a box that is on a surface. Uh, it's a 15 kilogram box, and it talks about a force going up of 100 newtons. Um, this is not the normal force. This is an applied force, and uh, let, let's go through and let's take a look at this question. So we're going to ignore this to begin with, and we're going to uh, just take a look and uh, work out what the normal force would be on this box if this wasn't force that wasn't there, and then we'll consider that force. All right, so let's talk about one. Hey, so we've got our box, we've got this here, our force of gravity is here, and we're gonna have our normal force here as normal. Oh, terrible. So our normal force is equal to our force of gravity, which is equal to mg. That's what we've been saying. So we have our 15 kilograms times our 9.8. And uh, where's my Casio FX 260 solar? Just the one, not the two. 15 times times 9.8 equals, equals 147 newtons. So in this situation, we have 147 newtons coming down, but it's not moving. Nothing's happening to it. So there has to be a force that's bouncing it of 147 newtons going up. <coughs> so the ground or the table that it's on is supplying that 147 newtons. Well, here, let's now consider the situation where we have our box, I was going, we have our box, and what we have is that we have a crane that is just starting to lift it. And so that crane is applying a force of 100 newtons, but we've got this 147 newtons coming down. So is there still a weight that's happening on here? Sort of think of the situation where you're standing on your bathroom scale and there's your feet and you've got your bathroom scale and uh, you know it says, you know, 23, I don't know, 230, there we go. Well, and then you stick out your hands and you push up on the counter beside you. What's going to happen to that reading there? Well, that reading is going to go down because you're putting your hands out and you're supporting yourself by pushing down on your hands. And if your hands are pushing down, then the normal force that the scale is providing is going to be less. So we can think of the same thing here. So we have 147 newtons going down. We have 100 newtons that we're applying elsewhere, and that leaves a total of 47 newtons that's going down. And so our normal force is now going to be equal to this 47 newtons. That is the force that is being provided by on that block. Okay. So the answer to that is A. All right, let's go on to B, or no, two. And number two is just getting you to identify forces. So we have force going down, we have force coming up, we have a force 
going left, that's our F1. This is our F2. This is our F3. And this is our F4. Now they tell us that it's being dragged towards the left. So our motion is in this direction. So F1 is going to be our pull. F3 is going to be our friction. Going down, well, this is going to be our force of gravity. And so F2 has to be our normal force. So the question is, which vectors represent the normal force and the force of friction? So F2 is equal to our normal force. And F1 is equal to our friction force. And so when we take a look at those, the one that makes sense is B. All right, question number three. And I almost wish question number three was before question number one, because it's probably easier to think about what's happening in question number three. In question number three, we've got our box. We have a force of gravity that's going down. The, the box has a mass of five kilograms. But then what we have is we have an additional force of 25 newtons. And so we're our normal force, well, let's work out our force of gravity then is going to be mg. So that's going to be 5 times our 9.8. So that will be equal to 49 newtons. So what we have is that we have 49 newtons going down. We have an additional 25 newtons there. And so our normal force has to be equal to the sum of both of those, which would be 74 newtons. And so that's where we get our answer as D. Now, the other way of sort of thinking about this is that, let's say we have, let's say we have a wall, and we have, uh, you know, something against the wall. Well, we're going to have the force of gravity going straight down, but if we don't want it to fall, we need to have a force of friction. That's going straight up. Well, the force of friction is going to only happen when there's a force that's pushing against the wall. And so we would have to have a force of a push in this direction, which creates a normal force in this direction. And that force of the push and the normal force would have to be such that the force of friction was equal to the force of gravity. So... <laughs> We want our force of friction to be equal to our force of gravity. And so we would have to have our mu Fn equal to our mg. And our Fn is going to be, call this, oh, let's come over here. Our, so our mu force of push would be equal to our mg. And so we have to push on here enough so the force of friction balances the force of gravity. And this is how we could figure out how much that force is. Um, the other way of looking at this, uh, at school, I have my vertical board, my vertical uh, whiteboards, and they're metal. And I have a bunch of magnets on them as well. Now, you can, you might think, well, magnets just stick. So if you put a magnet onto there, the magnet uh, sticks and it doesn't slide down because of the magnetic force. Well, not really. This is kind of the interesting thing. So if I have a magnet such as this, in essence, what we have is we have this force of attraction that's pulling it there, but we have a force of gravity that's coming down, and there has to be a force of friction that's going up such that they are balanced. 
And it's because this forks of friction comes because of this uh, force attractive that we have. That uh, it stays there. Now, the the interesting situation, and I've done this, is because I have some uh, cylindrical magnets as well. And so you have a cylindrical magnet, and you put it like this on the board. And what happens? Immediately it starts accelerating down, stuck to the wall, stuck to the, the board, but it doesn't stay in place because there's no friction, because this is able to rotate. And so it just rotates and it runs down the, the, the board. It's really kind of humorous. But uh, if we were at school, I would show you that. It was just an application of that normal force acting upon it. All right, we're to question number four there. And in question number four, what we have is that we've got a straight line graph. And we have force here, and we have change in length here. Well, whenever we have a straight line graph, the first word that should come out of your mind is slope, or slope dude. <laughs> puff, puff, positive. Nice, negative. All right, so we have our slope. Well, slope is equal to our change in y over our change in x. Well, that's equal to our change in our force over our change in x. Well, hold on. When we have force, well, force is equal to kx. That's what we have for our spring. And so if we went f divided by x, what do we have? Well, that's what k is. So if we find the slope, we're finding what the value of our spring constant is. And so that's why determine the spring constant. The spring constant is just going to be equal to our slope. So uh, slope change in force over our change in x. Well, actually, let's come back up here because we need some points. So this is our point one. And by careful consideration, it's 0 and, say, 175. Up here, we have 0.2. And it is uh, if you, it's 1.05 and 600. So then we can use these things. Our change in force, uh, well, it's going to be 600 minus 175. And over zero or 1.05 minus zero. So 600 minus 175, that's equal to 425. Divided by uh, 1.05. And so our K comes out to be 404 newtons per meter, and they have the answer is 400 newtons per meter. See, easy peasy. All right, let's continue on. Question number five. When a three kilogram weight is hung from an elastic band, it stretches by 15 centimeters. The spring constant for the elastic band would be approximately. So we've got an elastic band, and then we take the elastic band and we hang a mass from it. And the change in length is equal to 15 centimeters. And we know that this is a three kilogram weight. So what do we have going on here? So what we have is we have a force of gravity going down. And there has to be a force of the spring that's going up. And the force of this, and these two have to be equal to each other. Otherwise, it's moving. 
So if we know the force of gravity, so let's come back. Go. So her force of gravity is equal to our force of our spring. And so we're going to have 3 times 9.8, our mg. And that has to be equal to our k change in x. So k delta, well, our delta x is equal to 15 centimeters. Now, they're using centimeters. We don't have to change this to meters because they're not using meters. And so then our k will be equal to 3 times our 9.8 divided by our 15 centimeters. So 3 times 9.8 divided by 15. And that's equal to 1.96. So our k is equal to 2.0 newtons per centimeter. And so that's equal to d. All right, let's continue on. Question number six. Which of, so we have, which of the following best describes the difference between tension and compression in a spring? So tension, and then we have compression. So we have a spring in both cases, but for the tension, what we're doing is we're providing a force that's pulling it away. Whereas in compression, the forces are going the opposite direction. And so here the length is going to increase, and here the length is going to decrease. Now, F is equal to Kx. It doesn't matter whether tension or compression works exactly the same way. So, uh, compression makes the spring shorter, whereas tension makes it longer. A is going to be the correct answer. But, you know, tension, D, tension is both emotional stress, whereas compression is sadness and misery. I think that de deserves a, you know, a golf clap or something like that. All right, let's continue on. Question number seven. Question number seven. A crate that weighs 254 kilograms is sitting on the ground and is pulled by a forklift. If the static coefficient of friction is 0.45, how much force must be applied just to start it moving? All right, so we've got our crate, and you know, we can't leave an opportunity like this. So, I have to put a bit of humor into there. So, there's our crate, and we're pulling our crate, and uh, we know that the crate is uh, 254 kilograms. And we use static is equal to 0 0.450. The S stands for static. That means that the object's not moving when we're applying the force to get it to moving. That's what we're figuring out the friction is. Um, once it's moving, no longer would we use the coefficient of static friction. We'd be using kinetic friction, but that's okay. So this is going to be the force of our pull. And that has to be equal to the force of our friction. And so we're also going to have to have, of course, our normal force. All right. So our force normal will be equal to our force of gravity, which is equal to mg. So that's going to be equal to 254 kilograms times our 9.8. 254 times 9.8, that's equal to 2489 newtons. So then we need our force of friction. Our force of friction is the UFN. So that's equal to, you know, So that's equal to our 0 0.450 times our 2489. So that's then equal to 1120 newtons. That's the force of friction that would be required. So that's 
the answer. Or that's the force of friction, so that would be the minimum amount of force of the pole that would be required. And so that's answer A. All right, number eight, another crate. But this time we have a chimpanzee. So we have our warehouse floor, we have our crate, and you know there's bananas sticking up out of it. And what we have is we have our chimpanzee, <laughs> and he's pushing it. And so we have a force of gravity, that's a G. Uh, we're gonna have a normal force, and then we're gonna have a force of friction that he's pushing against. All right, so our normal force will be equal to a force of gravity, which is equal to mg, so that's equal to 75 times our 9.8. 75 times 9.8 equals 735. And so then our force of friction, mu Fn, well, coefficient of friction we're told is 0 0.25 times our 735. So that works out to be 184 uh, newtons. And uh, that would be A, which is 180 newtons. All right. Question number nine. Question number nine, a large mass has a weight of 400 newtons if the force required to keep sliding on the floor is 750 newtons. What is the coefficient of friction? All right, so here we have this. We're gonna have force of gravity coming down. We're gonna have normal force going up. We're gonna have our force of our push, or pull, however it was, and that's uh, 750 newtons. And we're gonna have our force of friction and um, constant velocity, uniform motion. Uniform motion that just means that our force of friction is equal to the force of our push. The technical way for it. Our force of gravity is 4,000 newtons, so our normal force has to be 4,000 newtons. So our force of friction is equal to mu Fn. So we'll have 750 is equal to mu times 4,000. So then mu is 750 divided by 4,000. And the Casio FX 260 solar tells us has a value of 0 0.19. No units to that, so that's answer A. All right, now we're to question number 10. And question number 10, you're going to see a number of these as we get into our next, the next unit. And uh, it's really not that bad. It just looks confusing. And But I bring a question into here because there's a lot of questions that we can answer on here. This is what we call a coupled system. Not a coupled system, a coupled system. And what it means is that we've got these mass one, and we have our mass two, and they're connected by the string. So we have a frictionless puller, we have a massless string, and so really we have these two objects. This one can move up and down, this one can move left and right, and they're interacting with each other through the string. And so if we take a look, we have a number of different forces on here. So we have a force here going down, and there has to be a force going up. On this one, again, we still have to have a force going down, a force going up, but now we're gonna have a force towards the right, and there needs to be a force towards the left. So let's consider, and let's go through and uh, label these. Well, this has to be a force of gravity, because it's going down, 
And so then we have a force going up. Well, this is what we're going to call a force T, a tension. And so you can think of it, if this guy, this thing is hand, hanging straight there, well, there has to be a force of tension going up that's equal to it. Now, if the force of gravity is greater than the force of tension, then the string breaks. So, right, that's all that happens. All right, so over here, we're going to have, this has to be a force of gravity. So this has to be our normal force. Same old, same old. And this here is going, has to be, like, here we have a force of tension. So here we have a force of tension as well that's going towards the right. We're here, it's going to up. And so this force here has to be a force of friction because it's going in the direction opposite to motion. We would expect this to move in that direction. Move. All right, so the question is, calculate the force of gravity in the two kilogram ball. So here's 10. And so this is two kilograms and this is two kilograms. And so, our uh, force of gravity is equal to mg, so that's equal to 2 on to 9.8. So our force of gravity is going to be equal to 19.6 newtons, and that's equal to a. That's 10. Let's continue going down. Question number 11 says, which of the arrows represent the force of gravity? Well, we have one force of gravity here. Uh, this is a force of gravity here. So that corresponds to forces C and F. Question number 12 says, well, which of these forces is a normal force? This force of tension is not normal. A normal happens when we have something that's in contact with the surface. It's the surface that creates the normal. So this is the only normal we've got up in this diagram. And so that corresponds to D. Then 13 says to calculate the friction between the two kilogram block and the table. We're told the coefficient of friction is 0.45. So for 13, the normal force will equal the force of gravity, so it will equal mg, that will equal 2 times our 9.8. And so the normal force will be equal to 19.6. Force of friction is equal to mu fn. So that will equal 0 0.45 times our 19.6. And so our force of friction comes out to be 8.8 .8 newtons. And when we take a look at that, the answer is B. Bum, 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 bum. All right, so then we come to question number 14. And question number 14 states, which arrow represents the force of friction? Well, we've already talked about that. And so that's that force there, and that corresponds to A. And there's the correct answer. All right. You know, contact me if you have questions. And uh, if you want to go over some things, that's quite all right. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully this helped you. And if you, yeah, there we go. Anyways, I'm going to go turn this off. And, uh,